Hey guys, it's time for our monthly update on the power loader. Though, I must admit, we were a bit late this month. Remember, this is one of our most complicated and expensive projects we've ever tackled on the channel. And something you guys might not actually realize is, this is actually just a passion project that Bogdan and I work on the weekends for. We can't actually devote much more time to it right now because Bogdan's still in school and I have a business to run during the week. With that in mind, I'm actually really happy and quite impressed with how much we've actually accomplished in the past few months. In our last update, we attempted to make the Jaws of Life, but our design actually failed miserably which is a good opportunity for problem solving. You see, when the jaws exerted any kind of force, they bent open, almost like a duck's beak. The issue? While it seemed like it would work based on the CAD design and the finite element analysis that we performed using SOLIDWORKS, in practical application, we overlooked the slop in the system and the strength of our rail design, which we had settled on trying to cut costs, because proper rails are very, very, very expensive. With this much work put into it, we can't let the jaws stay like this. So in this episode, we're gonna completely redesign them to be stronger and more rigid. Let's let Bogdan go over the new design. So as you guys saw in the last episode of the Power Loader, we had some issues with the grip. Yes. <laughs> so we considered multiple options. That's not enough for us. That's too weak. Huge. And That's it's still way too, too expensive. That costs how much? These are too tall. That's way too And weak. they cost too much. Only 2,900 foot pounds? And then we came across this. High load oil embedded flange sleeve bearings. 14,000 pounds for $19. One and a half inch diameter. 75,000 PSI yield strength. $73. Hmm. Let me show you the design we came up with. Here we have two one and a half inch hardened steel shafts with bushings at the top and the bottom of the finger and that will allow the gripper to slide up and down smoothly. This design should be a lot more rigid than the previous one. In order to make sure that our design is going to work, we actually put it through a SOLIDWORKS stress analysis. And we can see at the tip of the gripper is the red and that's the maximum point of displacement, how much the gripper will actually flex or uh, bend. And that's actually less than seven millimeters, which is significantly better than the previous design. So with our previous stress analysis in SOLIDWORKS, we calculated about four centimeters of deflection. However, that did not account for the slop in the bearings and the guide rails warping during welding. With the new design, since the bushings are much higher tolerance and we're not gonna be welding the linear guide rails, those problems should be omitted. I'm satisfied with these results. Let's actually go and modify the gripper. So this is the shim that was inside of the rail that was holding the, the bearings parallel. And uh, it's not parallel anymore. So uh, we're gonna need guide rails. Three-dimensional plasma cutting. Ooh. So what are these? They're, they're bushings on the near rails. High strength bushings. So hopefully the gripper is not gonna duck face anymore. Sweet. This. Oh. This looks way more robust than last design. Nice work, Bogdan. One more to go. Looking good. It's a nice shirt you're wearing. Well, Could our audience spring. audience get, get get their own version of the Hacksmith Evolution from teespring.com slash Hacksmith? Merch link in bio right now. All right, so Bogdan's got the gripper design all assembled now, but now we need to actually weld it in place. And we have to make sure that the jaws are perfectly parallel before we do that. So we're actually gonna weld along here and here. So what we're doing is we're using these ratchet straps to actually lift the grippers up off of the cylinders to make sure they don't touch the inside of here so they slide back and forth. 
and then two, we got to bring these together using the hydraulics and clamp something that's perfectly parallel so that through the whole movement of the jaws, they stay nice and straight, not like the, the duck jaws that we had previously. So let's do that. Again, we're going to have some a little flex like this. As you can see, it's clamped down here. But what we're going to do is we're going to actually use some ratchet straps and try and clamp this together. And then hopefully everything works. All right, so now that we've made sure it's parallel this way, we also need to make sure the jaws are parallel like this. Mark. There. Perfectly balanced. As all things should be. Alright, just gonna line that there. Now that it's all tacked up, let's see if it moves. Time to test the new design by crushing a can of crush. Stop. Oh my god, yes. Oh yeah. Keep going. Oh, so good. I like it. All right, man versus machine. All right, so this is looking really promising. We're using two one and a half inch hardened steel shafts along with bushings on these pipes attached to each, so they've actually got a very large engagement on that, which means they really shouldn't flex very much while we're doing it. So let's finish welding and then we can paint this and time to crush it. So after welding the uh, bushing tubes into place, uh, we attempted to remove the actual tube used to prevent the thing from shrinking or warping using a hydraulic press. And uh, it did get out about an inch, but the actual tube sheared in half. So uh, we're gonna need a different method. Alrighty, so I haven't had any luck getting the pipe out of the well, the pipe. And then we're like, we need an arbor press. We don't have an arbor press. And then I was like, our neighbor just got like an antique, massive like forging, old school arbor press. And he's in the process of fixing it and it seems to work right now. So we're gonna go try and use it and see what happens. It's gotta be like 80 years old, at least. And this thing has to weigh like over a thousand pounds. And it's practically one piece of steel. It's stuck in there good. Ah, this would have been so, so perfect if it worked. We need a real hydraulic press. We need to get that pipe out of the gripper somehow. So we went and bought a hydraulic press. Welcome to the Hydraulic Press Channel. So, we've got our pipe here, which we want to try and push out the bottom. Got a few spacer plates right now for now, just to see if it actually budges. Really hope it does. Yeah. Faster, faster. It's almost there. Uh, we're there. Holy crap. Where's all the other stuff that's in there? Oh, yeah. This was a wise investment. All right, we've got all the parts made now. It's time to reassemble. All right, gotta get the motor on. Okay, now I need to get the whole gripper on here. Oh, We're almost there, Parkson. There's one screw. You see, as an engineer, it's always important to go down to the actual assembly floor and see the things you've designed actually be made. Because then you'll realize that in SolidWorks, everything seems simple, but in real life, it is not. It's going to actually go all the way around. We're going to get up here at the other valve. Gosh, there's no slop. What a shame. <laughs> it really helped us install this. <laughs> yeah, open. Let's crush stuff then. For the initial test, we're gonna see how Mjolnir holds up 
All right, go for it. Oh my God. Oh my God, Mjolnir is worthy. <laughs> Terrible idea, number two. Woo! Oh my God. Woo! Wow, it folded so perfectly. It, it works. No flex. Only took four hours to assemble. That it did. All right, so the new gripper design is done. We're using two one and a half inch hardened steel shafts with bushings riding on both edges. And basically there's almost no slop in the system now. So I'm pretty excited to see what this thing can actually do. So we've got a nice pile of uh, victims. This is all stuff we've reclaimed from the garbage. We've got a, a live shell here. This is from a gun thing. Anyways, to start, we're gonna crush Deadpool. Let's see what happens. Uh, Riley, I need an assistant. You may press this button. Ah, go. Oh boy. Oh, 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 oh. He's paper thin. Oh, he's so light. I need something to throw. That is a quality vase. Uh, uh, <laughs> I just send it. Woo! Danger exposed. <laughs> Next. Oh! Oh, no! You know, we probably should have taken the battery out. Or close. So now we're going to destroy an apple. <laughs> And that is how to fold a MacBook. I see death. This alarm clock radio. Is it too strong or not? Oh, you're playing this thing wrong. Crush. There, there's definitely a lack of fire in this test, so we have a 6,200 milliamp hour lipo battery. Oh my god! Open, open, open! Touchdown! Safety bucket! Into the car! <laughs> oh, oh, it's fake. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Alright, that was pretty awesome. The new design works flawlessly. There's barely any flex in the jaw anymore. Uh, we still have to route the hydraulic hoses, obviously, because they're just hanging out. But this is a really good sign. We've actually already started work on the second arm, so we're going to be able to duplicate this whole thing. Then we're going to build the body and then the legs. Make sure you subscribe because you're not going to want to miss this project. It's our biggest and I think the best project we've done so far. Who are you?